this rack's a pattern. This is where the process pretty much starts because um, we have to accumulate all the different pieces we need to build a helmet. And depending on the helmet is whatever parts we have to have made. Like this here would be for a commercial helmet. These are the side window bases. So these would get sanded down, screw holes would be drilled in them, and it, the glass would be glazed in, and then a guard would go over the top. Um, so this, would, this pattern would give us two sets. And they're made out of, the castings are made out of red brass, which is 85% copper, 5% uh, lead, 5% tin, and 5% zinc. Um, that, that would be for the uh, commercial helmet. This is the elbow that's used on our air hat. Uh, one of the... Uh, one port is for the air supply, main supply, and then the other port is for a bailout. They either run a secondary line, they'll wear a pony bottle, or they'll wear a scuba tank on their backs as an emergency gas supply. Uh, in our shop, uh, the, the, the castings that come off the patterns, they have to be sanded, which is done right over there, but they have to be buffed smoothed out from the sanding process. This is our buffing room. Um, we use a, uh, a greaseless compound that has an abrasive in it, um, 80 grit, uh, which goes on the, on the cloth wheels. We have sanding belts back there where we can, we can uh, sand flat parts. Um, the faces of like those window frames, they have to be flat and smooth, so we put that on the, on the belt sander and get those nice and cleaned up before we can do any assembly work. Um, uh, on that other pedestal over there, we have a, uh, that's a, those hard wheels have an abrasive that's applied with an adhesive to the wheel, and it's, it's painted, and we paint the adhesive on them, we roll it in the, uh, the grit to uh, recondition those wheels regularly. Um, they are really good for doing heavy buffing and, and polishing work. Uh, the collector market is pretty important to our company. Um, we build new standard helmets. Um, we repair old ones. We got into, uh, we have a woodworking subcontractor that builds helmet stands for customers. Um, so it's, uh, they, they, when they get their helmet, they immediately have a way to display it. Because um, we're, these helmets are heavy. Uh, Mark V is 53 pounds, and you want it on a stable platform when it's in your living room or in your rec room or wherever, because you don't want the cat climbing on it and having it fall off, or the dog running into the table that it's on and knocking it over, because if a 53-pound helmet falls on your pet, it's going to do some damage. So we're very conscious of that fact. Over here, we have racks of parts in this area. Um, we have valves and fittings and communications parts right here. Uh, these are the different uh, copper spinning shells. Um, down on the bottom here, you can see there's under the under the cellophane wrap here. There's a wood pattern, the shape of the shell. It's a puzzle block basically. Um, you can see by the contour, if it was a solid piece, you'd never get it out. So there's a center piece that's once they 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 mount this in a machine, and then they use like an English wheel to shape it around the metal block, or the wood block. And then once they get to the shape, they pull the centerpiece out, and then the, the pieces can be removed right out the bottom of the neck. Uh, this would be the Navy, U.S. Navy Mark V helmet shell, which has a unique shape. Up here, these are like the commercial helmet that was in the display room. Uh, we call this a bubble shell because it's almost spherical. It, 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 comes around and then it drops straight down to the neck. It's about the size of a basketball, a little bit larger. Um, these are uh, one of the, one of the helmets we offer in the Morse helmet line is a commercial helmet that was made from the late 1880s 
up until the mid 1930s. It's the second generation. Now this is our sanding area. We start cleaning up the castings and getting them ready for buffing. Uh, we're working on wing nuts. Uh, this is the faceplate wing nut uh, for the Mark V faceplate. Uh, these are breastplate wing nuts. This is a flanged one that goes where the joints come together. And then this is the plain one here that uh, goes in between. And down this, this aisle is all of the, uh, the pull parts we need to, to build helmets. Um, this is all standard stuff along here. These racks here are Desco's and then the far ones are Morse parts. This is the area where we do uh, the standard helmet assemblies. The one on the stand over there is one we're building for stock. We like to keep at least one helmet in, in inventory. So it, it does take us uh, six to eight weeks to build a helmet. We still make diver's knives. Uh, we're assembling an order for a dealer. And, uh, Right now we're waiting on uh, knife sheath castings to come in from the foundry and then they'll go over into our machine shop where they'll be all machined up and then we can go ahead and assemble them. As I, I was saying, we do um, repair work and refurbishing. This helmet right here is, it came into us, a uh, customer purchased it from a, a dealer. Uh, a nautical antique dealer and it had been heavily modified they had taken they had taken the spit cock off and put a, a valve they went to a hardware store and bought a brass valve and mounted it there for air control and then they had copper tubing running around on the inside they had really tore this thing up um, but we started looking at it looked at the serial number and the date. This is actually one of the summer of 1916 helmets when the Mark V just came out. Uh, on the original Morse helmets, on the original Morse helmets, you'll see that the elbow passes through the copper and then is soldered on the back side. There's no rivets involved. Um, on the later Mark V helmets, the elbow is flush mounted from the outside and there's three rivets in it. So we knew this was an early, early helmet in the Mark V production. Um, they had put some weird cobbled together elbow on here for communications. So, the, originally, the customer wanted us to just rehab it and get it diveable. And we started talking to him about this being one of the early production Mark Fives. And I said, we do have the capability of putting it back to the way it was. This is uh, where we do some of our machining. A couple of years ago, uh, this facility housed a company that made uh, laboratory sieves. Uh, for pharmaceuticals. They made small sieves for, pharm for pharmaceuticals and they also made big sieves for like rock crushers and stuff. Um, they have a machining uh, machine shop over on the other side that serviced this production line. Um, plus they did contract work. They did our, our heavy machining. We did our light stuff on these machines. Um, when the owner of that company, who was a friend of Christian Kellner's, decided to retire, he sold off the sieve business to a competitor, which left this space empty, so we moved here from downtown. Um, we also acquired the machine shop operation, so they're primarily contract machining now, but then our stuff also goes over there to be machined. If our machines will hold it, they can pretty much do any shape that somebody wants. This lays, this lays here, um, the big neck ring, 
they do on this machine because this is the largest machine, largest capacity machine they have, and those rings require this machine to actually do them. And this is one of the oldest machines in the place too, but it, it's a tank. It just runs and runs and runs. I got one more thing I can show you in here where we pound the breastplate. We actually put this in here because there was a gas hooked up for this torch. Um, we have to shape a copper shell for, this, for the breastplate, for the standard. So we take a sheet of copper, we we'll put it in there, clamp, we we'll clamp it in place, and then with this torch, we anneal the copper, and we use a wood mallet. Uh, mallets are over there. But then we start forming the copper, and we have to keep heating it, because if you just pound on the copper, it'll work hard, and then you'll crack it. So you have to keep it annealed and soft so that it will follow these contours. Um, it'll take anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes to pound one of these. This is our soldering area. That's Jared. Uh, he's our master solderer. Uh, you can see he's got one of the knife sheets uh, they were repairing. Um, sometimes we get uh, flawed porosity uh, or small defects in the sheet. Uh, sometimes they can be cleaned up and repaired and they're, and they're just fine. Let's let them open the door and look inside here. Let them open the door for a second. Okay, let's see Over there you can see some uh, air hats that he has on in, in process. Um, you can see that the solder joints, you know, they, they look real pretty when they're done, but you can see right now they'll require a, a fair amount of cleanup. Um, and then there's a lot of soldering that goes on on the inside too, because you have the base ring here, the shell gets packed on, then the snout gets pushed into place in a jig that's over there, that wood jig. Once he gets everything packed together, then that has to all be soldered together. There's hours and hours of labor and just the soldering alone.